This is the basic building blocks of your programming language. So what is this I have? This is a floating point. This is what I will call it as a floating point. Fundamental data type in the sense the basic data type is what you need to understand. Hello everyone, I welcome all of you to the yet another and interesting session. Suppose if you have not subscribed to the channel yet, I recommend all of you to please click on the bell button to subscribe to the channel because you will be missing out a lot of important notifications on a lot of important sessions. So my dear students, uh, I'm Kaushik K.S., a lecturer in the Department of Computer Science with the Ashram First Grade College. So hope you have seen my previous sessions, thinking that you have seen. So let me begin this session for all of you. Then what is that I have in this session? Let's have a quick look. My dear students, I will be discussing the VCD concept today. So what is this VCD? Yes, it's all about variables, data types and constants. What exactly constants is all about? What exactly variables is all about? What's all about the data types? It's very important if you understand these three topics, you can play like anything in the programming language is what I would like to tell you. Watch the session more than five times. It's going to be very helpful for all of you because this is the basic building blocks of your programming language. Yes, let me take a lot of time and explain this and make this concept very simple for all of you. So please be with me to understand this. The first one that I have is all about the constants. What exactly the constants is all about? If I just look at this word, I remember a quote. Change is the only constant thing in life. What exactly it means? I want all of you to think about it. My dear students, let's come back to the concept. What exactly that I have with respect to the constants? The value which will not change throughout the execution of the program is what I will call it as a constants. I repeat, the value which does not change throughout the execution of the program is what I will call it as a constant. This is the definition. So, we have not understood the definition whatever you are trying to explain. Yes, let me take a pleasure to explain out more no, on constants now with an example. So guys, before I get into the concepts example, let's understand what exactly constants is all about and how many different types of constants you will have. Whatever you are seeing on my screen, it's very important and I want all of you to take a screenshot of it. I will just move out of the screen. So this is going to be a very important question with respect to your exam point of view. When it comes to the constants, we have two different types of constants. The first one that we have is numeric constant and the second one that we have is character constant. What exactly the constant is all about? Any value, that's what I will call it as a constant. Any value, as of now, you just have to understand like this. Any value, I will call it as a constant. But when it comes to this constant, I have two types of constants. Say for example, can I uh, write A is equal to 10? Yes. So in this, can you tell me which one is the value? Of course, obviously you will tell 10 as a value. 10 is the value that I have here. So please understand this is what I will call it as a constant. When it comes to this, I have different types of constant. Say for example, if I write 10, so you will be able to understand it very easily. This 10 is a numeric constant. This 10 is a numeric constant. Suppose if I don't write 10, let me just write say for example, A is equal to Mysore. Okay, what do you call this as? Obviously, you will be able to understand it very easily. This Mysore is a character constant. Yes, why? Because I have a group of characters. So, my dear students, please understand. Constants in the sense, it is a value which remains as it is throughout the execution of the program. So, fine. So, you understood, you got an idea what exactly the constant is all about now. Let's understand how many different types of constants do we have. So we have two different types of constants. The first one that I have is numeric constants. If my value is all about the numbers, then I will call that as a numeric constants. So when it comes to the numeric constants, I will have two types. The first one that I have is integer constant and the second one that I have is real constant. 
what exactly integer constant and the real constant is all about sir. It's very simple. Say for example, if I write a is equal to 10. So this is what I will call it as a whole number, right? So guys, this is what I will call it as a integer constant. This is what I will call it as a integer constant. But please observe. So I will be writing like this 10.35. What is this? I have two parts in this number. So the first part that I have is integer part and the second part I will call it as a floating part. So what is this I have? This is a floating point. This is what I will call it as a floating point. So please observe. So guys, this type of number, I will call it as a floating number. So this is what I will call it as a real constant. In other words, I will call this as a real constant. So this is what you need to understand. So you have two types of constants in the integer, is it? No, in the numeric constants, the first one that I have is integer constants. So only 10 you will write. So is it 10? So you can write 20, 30, whatever you want without decimal points. That is what I will call it as an integer number. If you write the decimal points like this 0.35, so all those things I will call it as a real constant. Another name for the real constant that I will be using is floating numbers. So fine. So you understood about the numeric constants. Let's talk about uh, the character constants. In this character constants also, I have two categories. So please observe carefully. The first one that I have is single character constants. The name itself says what exactly the single character constant is all about. Say for example, I have A. Suppose if I write like this. So what do you call this as? So this is looking like a half star. No, it is not star. This is the A. <laughs> okay. So what do you call this as? This is a single character, right? Yes. If I store anything in the form of single character, so that's what I will call it as a single character constant, which is enclosed between the quotes. So this is very, very important. This is like a pant and shirt, what we are wearing. So without pant and shirt, we don't look complete, right? In the same way, this single character should have the quotes. So that's what you need to observe, all right? So then I think, hope you will be able to answer now. What is string constant? String in the sense what? String is a group of characters. What is the meaning of string? String is a group of characters which is enclosed between the quotes. So for example, if I write A is equal to Mysore, A is equal to Mysore. Guys, what is that I have here? I have group of character. Do I have only one character? No, I have more than one character. When I have more than one character, so please you need to understand that this is treated as strings. So that's what you need to observe here. So I think I have concluded the concept of constants by now. So my dear students, so it's time to recollect or recap the concept of constants what we have discussed now. So we have majorly two categories of constants. One is numeric constant, another one is character constant. But when it comes to the numeric constants, how many classifications we have? Of course, we have two. The first one that we have is integer and the second one that we have real constants. Yes, of course, the second one that we have is single character constant and string constant. This is a very important thing that you should know when it comes to the constants. All right, so moving on to the next one that we have. Variables, I, I took this example right in the previous uh, slide and I, I spoke about this part. I never spoke about this part. So what is this A? So you did not spoke about this part. So what exactly is this? So this A is what I will call it as a variable. Let me give you an example to understand it. I have a basket. I have a basket. Why do I have this basket? So to carry something inside the basket, obviously, right? So I don't, I don't uh, carry the basket, you know, just for the sake of carrying it. Obviously, we use the basket to carry something or we carry the bag to carry something. This bags and the baskets are meant to carry something. In the same way, this variables, what we have is meant to carry something or meant to store something. So whenever I say basket or whenever I say variable, you should imagine the basket. All right. So why? Because the variable always holds the value. Value is nothing but the constants. 
all right that is the first point that you should remember that is the first point that you should remember so fine so let's understand it now theoretically how exactly we are dealing with variables variable is a data name that may be used to store a data value yes so now let's understand this how exactly we are using it in a programming language say for example we have the beautiful box what is this a very beautiful box yes or no yes say for example i'm store i want to store 10 so i will be storing this 10 so now what do you call this as so you will call this as memory you will call this as memory yes i would like to call this as memory okay so fine when I call this as memory, so I have a lot of memory chunks or a lot of memory pieces with me. I need to identify where exactly I have stored 10. So for that, what I will be doing is for this memory, I will be giving a name. So that it will be very easy for me to identify where exactly I have stored 10. That's very important that all of us should do. So this is what the purpose of the variable Variable is nothing but the name that you are giving where exactly you have stored the value. So in other words, to make you understand, I will call this variable as a basket, which will help me to hold the value. Is that? Yes, of course, memory is holding the value, but it's a different example that you can imagine. So why are we using the variable? So fine, you got a complete idea about what is variable and what is constant. Suppose if I write like this, Hope you will be able to distinguish which one is variable and which one is constant now. Right? So, let's understand some of the rules of variables. When I, when I take, a, when I want to create a variable, obviously I have to uh, follow some of the rules. Variables in the sense of name, I have to give the name for that location, right? Say for example, if I want to name a baby, I have to follow some of the rules. So, I have to check now which letter uh, it should hold good or what should I suggest on what time the baby has got the birth. A lot of things they will look into the astrology, right? In the same way, I have to go through a lot of different rules if I want to name a variable. Yes or no? Yes. Let's discuss that one by one. All right. So listen to me carefully. Guys, I have uh, the first one. They must begin with the letters or underscore. That's a very important point that you need to remember here. Say for example, I need to take the variable name. Let's take uh, A, B, C. Can I write like this as a name of the variable? Of course, you can name this as a variable name. So, because it's satisfying the rule number one. According to the rule number one, it should start with a letter or underscore. So it should never start with a number. That's the very important point that you should understand. It should never start with a number or a special character except underscore. So that's very important that you need to understand. That's our first point that you need to understand. Fine. The second one, ANSI C standard recognizes the first 31 characters. How many characters I can have? So you can have 31 characters in the variable name so that much big you can have that's what i would like to tell you with the second point and the third important point is uppercase and the lowercase are significant say for example significant in the sense let me just make it very simple for all of you it's a case sensitive whatever you are using you have to use that suppose if i use capital k all right so k o u s h i k okay this is capital k i'm using this is different and if I use small k and this is different. So capital letters and the small letters are treated differently in the variable names. That's what you need to understand. So fine, it should not be a keyword. That's a one more important thing. What exactly it should not be a keyword? So keywords are the reserved words which has got the special meaning which I have already discussed. Yes or no? Yes. I should not use the keywords when I'm declaring the variable is what you need to remember. That's very important that all of you should understand. Sir, can you give us some example? Yes. Uh, in Canada, say for example, uh, can I uh, name a baby has a headache, uh, stomach pain or uh, overweighted? Can I use this word? No, right? So that's not a noun. So that's very important that you need to understand. 
all those words has got a meaning predefined meaning such words i cannot use it to name a baby right so that's why i am not supposed to use such keywords even in the programming language we have some of the words which is already predefined so such keywords i will call it as a keywords i'm not supposed to use such keywords to name a variable that's what you need to remember say for example i have if i have while okay i have for all these things are the keywords which has got its own meaning which has got its own meaning i'm not supposed to use all these words so probably i have more than 32 keywords with me in this programming language so i'm not supposed to use such keywords to name a variable is what i would like to tell you yes so fine the last one white space is not allowed so they don't have any covid problem if you go to the movie theater you have to leave one seat space and then you have to sit but there is no covid problem here you don't have to give a space here suppose a space b c you don't have to write like this no covid problem so you can write like this a b c all right so you are not supposed to use the white space is what i would like to tell you at this point of time so fine this is the rules that you need to follow please uh, make a note of all these points i will just move out of the frame yes hope you have uh, taken it moving forward to the next one a very important point this is what you need to understand in this session uh, very carefully so i have the concept called data types so what exactly data types is all about my dear students let me take an example to make you understand or make you understand this topic data types is one of the important topics that you should know that's a basic concept that uh, will help you to understand the concept of programming language yes i have a coconut so do you have only one coconut imagine in the example i have one coconut okay so in this coconut i have three things to carry that so one is uh, the gunny bag another one is a uh, plastic bag another one is a school bag which one you would like to suggest me to carry that coconut tell me think wisely obviously i know all of you are a bright students you will go for uh, the plastic handbag you will not suggest or you will not take the gunny bag or you will not take the college bag because it consumes a lot of space the suitable bag to carry without wasting much space the best bag to carry the coconut is all about the handbag yes or no yes what is the reason what make you to select that handbag because you will be telling a lot of points saying that sir we will be saving a lot of space by selecting the handbag in the same way my dear students i have discussed a different types of constants in my previous slide each constant's weight in terms of memory is different when it comes to integer it is different when it comes to character it is different when it comes to float it is different when it comes to string it is different the size of each and every constant is different so it's very important that i should know that the costliest thing that i use in the system is memory my head always runs to save the memory and to increase the execution speed of my program when this is my priority then how do i save my memory say i have 100 rupees i need to give that for a 10 people for a breakfast how do i manage this 100 rupees is a challenge for me somebody will have too much of food somebody will have less food somebody will have average food if i give 25 rupees to each one of them i will be able to give only for four people then how do i manage for 10 people so i need to individually go to them i need to ask them what is that they need suppose some of them will have the breakfast some of them will have only coffee some of them will have only biscuits some of them will not have anything so individually i have to go them say for example for a first person they need only two idlis it charges 10 rupees i will give 10 rupees the second person they need only biscuits they need only four rupees i will give four rupees i am saving six rupees there i will go to the third person so he need 25 rupees he needs four idlis they need 25 rupees the other guy he needs only seven rupees for one coffee so some other guy he needs 30 rupees so like this 
I will be going individually and I will be allocating the money to everybody so that some of the person would have saved some money to me so that I can allocate for the person who is required more. In the same concept, the same concept I am trying to implement even in the programming with the concept of data types. So this data type will help me for two things. The first thing, the primary motto is to make the programming language have the more different types of data types, which will help the programmer to have a different data types to have that in the programming language. That is the first thing. And the second thing is to manage the memory wisely. How much is required? Only that much I will allocate. So I will not allocate the memory which is not required, which is unnecessary. So this is one of the major thing that you need to understand. So before I start my concept. So when it comes to the data type, with respect to the exam point of view, my dear students, you just have to remember. So three things that is three different main different data types. So primary or fundamental data type. The first type of data type that you need to remember is primary data type or fundamental data type. And the second one that I have is derived data type. And the last one that I have is user defined data type. I will be speaking in detail about this in the next slide. So I want all of you to be alert when I'm discussing this. All right, so look at the chart that I have. So as I told you, I have three different types of data types. You can observe in my slide, I have given it as C++ data type. So my dear students, some of the data types that I have in C, most of the data type that I have in C++. So the data types that I have in C, okay, so that I have in C++, that is the major advantage that I have. All right, I will be discussing this in detail. Listen to me carefully. The first data type that I have is fundamental data type. Fundamental data type in the sense the basic data type is what you need to understand. The basic is what I will call it as a fundamental. When it comes to the fundamental data type, what are the different data types that I have? The first one that I have is integer. Yes, we have already studied integer data type in the sense what I will be able to store the integer value 10, 20, 30 like this. The next one that I have is character data type. What exactly the character data type is all about? When it comes to the character data type, I will be able to store the single character. Say for example, yay. So this is a character data type, which is enclosed between the quotes. That's what you should remember. What is the next example? I can also take B, I can also take C. So all these things are what? So this is the single character that I'm going to store with the help of this data type. What exactly the float? So you all know that we have discussed this in the integer constant that is real. So 10.35, okay, this is what I will call it as a float value. 10.35, 11.35, so 17.45. So wherever you come across with floating point, so this type of value is what I will call it as a float. That's what you need to understand. So guys, in the same way I have double. So double in the sense, it doubles the capacity to store the value of integer float. That's what you need to understand here. All right, so when it comes to void, very beautiful and my favorite data type. Okay, so what exactly what? It does not return anything. So remember, it does not return anything. It does not store anything. That's what you need to remember. The same way I have Boolean. When it comes to Boolean, so please understand zero or one, true or false. It stores or it gives you only two value that is true or false or zero or one. So that's what I will call it as a Boolean. So this is what you need to remember with respect to this fundamental data types. So fine, when we have this fundamental data types, so why do I need this derived data type? That's what you need to remember. So guys, so we will not be discussing this references, but arrays, functions, pointers. I will be discussing these three data types in detail in your coming sessions because you have a separate chapters on these three. You have a separate chapters on arrays, you have a separate chapters on pointers, you have a separate chapters on functions. So, of course, yes, sir, you will be discussing about arrays. What is arrays, what is functions and what is pointers? 
But what do you, why do you call this as derived data types? Please understand. So I will be deriving all these data types with the help of this fundamental data types. If I don't have this fundamental data types, I will not be able to derive this data type. That's why I will call this as a derived data types. So fine. So I have these two data types, so which is already there in the C programming language. But as a programmer, I'm not happy because I don't have a flexibility to create my own data type. I have to follow what they have given me. Then how do I solve this problem? To solve this problem, to make or to allow the programmer or to allow the user to create their own data type, I have two different data types in C. So that is structures and unions, which will help me to create their own data types. It means to say that they will help us to create a user defined data type. So this too, we don't have in C, it's there in C++. Okay, that's what you need to remember. So when it comes to structures and unions, even you have structures and unions as a separate chapter, we will be discussing that in detail. So guys, but when it comes to the different data types, what we have, so you should know this completely. This is going to be a very important question. So with respect to your exam point of view, okay? So please, please take a screenshot of it and understand. And you should be able to write this chart neatly. Take a screenshot of it, hope you have taken. So guys, this gives you a brief knowledge with respect to the data type. And here we comes with a thank you note. So hope you have liked the session. So guys, if you have liked the content what I have, so in this session, don't forget to click on the like button and share it with your friends. Thank you, bye bye.